Next, we're going to talk with Elizabeth Yano, who's a co-director and research center, uh, research career scientist at the VA Greater Los Angeles Health Services Research and Development Center of Excellence and adjunct professor at, of health services at the UCLA School of Public Health. Dr. Yano's research involves evaluating organizational influences on quality of care. She has been the chief architect of a series of national organizational surveys spanning VA's quality transformation as well as organizational initiatives in primary care, women's health, HIV care, and inpatient quality. She has also evaluated impacts of system reorganization and practice level quality improvement interventions. Dr. Yano has been in the thick of it for a number of years and has an inc incredible amount of experience to, uh, to build on and to share with us. She won't share all of it with us in these 10 minutes, but she will point to uh, some directions we can go and think about. So, Becky, welcome. Thank you very much. So I have the, the uh, interesting task of trying to pull together everything we've been talking about, multi-level interventions in the last day and a half, uh, and thinking about what it really takes to implement and spread them into real routine practice. In 10 minutes. Uh, so with that, um, I want to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Larry Green, Karen Glanz, John Ayanian, Brian Mittman, who's here, our NCI connection, Veronica Chalette, and Lisa Rubenstein. So as we've already been discussing, scientific evidence uh, about what works in health and healthcare tends to take decades to move into the routine care you and I might experience in the doctor's office or the bedside. And most of that evidence is single site and single level. And as a result, that evidence from our perspective is unfortunately quite flawed because it's been tested under highly controlled and homogenized circumstances in settings that are very rarely those in which the vast majority of Americans obtain their health care. So when applied to real world settings, we really shouldn't be very surprised when we see a voltage drop in the kind of outcomes that we can expect uh, once we try and take it to scale. That's led to greater recognition of the contextual influences underlining both uh, intervention success or failure, which has motivated interventions that target those context levels moving forward. The dilemma is that there are very few multi-level interventions that have been conducted along the cancer care continuum and very fewer uh, that have actually been implemented into practice. So how is implementation different from everything we've been talking about so far? Well, in this situation, we're no longer talking about testing the original efficacious intervention, no matter how many levels it's been designed for. We're testing a set of strategies for deploying the multi-level intervention into practice, which requires adapting them to different contexts and focusing on activities that facilitate the uptake, adoption, and implementation of attributes of each intervention at each level that you want to work within. That, as folks have, before me have already mentioned, requires engagement and involvement of a wide range of stakeholders, partners, and implementation at each level. And this is harder for us as researchers, and I think one of the reasons so many of these studies are at the patient and the provider level is that's where we have our illusion of control. When you begin to go to other levels, it's the researcher's capacity to influence adoption and implementation is acutely determined by the handoffs and the support that's constructed through the partners who live in that other realm where you as a researcher don't typically uh, reside. Now, as if implementation wasn't hard enough, trying to spread multi-level interventions in a way that achieves a universal and permanent new ways of doing business is a huge challenge. So our process in this regard was to identify a series of cancer and non-cancer multi-level intervention exemplars that had been implemented into practice or policy that span different levels and different stages of the care continuum. Now, there's little time to give you the details of each of one of these um, interventions, and many of them probably missed being picked up by the other um, literature reviews that the other groups did because commonly in their publications, they only reported at least two levels but did plenty of work at third and fourth and sometimes fifth levels, which again shows the, the, the limitations of our publication possibilities. We include the Pool Cool Diffusion Trial, which was a skin cancer uh, prevention program, uh, the Choice Cancer Education Program, uh, Improving Systems for Colorectal Cancer Screening at the Harvard Vanguard Medical Associates uh, Integrated Medical Group, uh, the Best Practices Comprehensive Tobacco Control Programs, uh, led by uh, the CDC once the California and the Massachusetts programs were adopted in terms of best practices and then disseminated to other states. 
Uh, we also look at the depression, the TIDES depression collaborative care models. And we include this as a non-cancer exemplar because it's one of the only ones that actually spans all the levels of the onion. Um, and then the VA uh, colorectal cancer collaborative, or C4. This is just to give you an idea of, of how these different um, exemplars span some of the levels that we've been talking about over the last day and a half. Uh, the, the other key thing here is that the usual, the interventions that are each and within each one of these levels are many of the usual suspects that you're familiar with. Reminders among patients, reminders among providers. But as you get to the higher levels, they tend to be uh, evidence-based quality improvement approaches to actually change manager behavior, to change leadership activities. So in our efforts to um, basically do what you might call a cross-case analysis across these exemplars, we came together with a series of lessons learned that I'll go through in the time that I have. The first one, which I think is a theme you've heard about again in the last day and a half, is the importance of the combinations as well as the phases of multi-level intervention implementation. And that's attention to stakeholders at each level. Uh, and to understand how those levels may interact and where possible to create interdependencies across those levels. For example, in the tobacco control programs, local funding was based on mapping what you were going to do in a local community to what the state's priorities were. Um, and that allowed for a certain amount of uh, homogeneity across uh, those levels. It's also important to determine the quality of evidence that you actually have for interventions at each level. And where in lieu of evidence, you don't, in lieu of evidence, blending experience and expert opinion um, to fill in the gaps. The use of social marketing for interventional messaging was also a key factor in the success of these implementation activities and something unfortunately we're not as good at as researchers uh, in terms of getting our messages across to diverse groups that don't necessarily have the same values and plans that we do. The use of rapid cycle improvement or plan, do, study, act pilots to test within and across levels were key, and consideration of staged approaches uh, and giving each level adequate time to learn, to consume, and to consider the changes into their normal processes of care as you're giving them new evidence to consider and to enact is absolutely key. It's also important to consider the top-down and bottom-up implementation aspects. Not all of these, coming from the VA, people assume for healthcare reform and other kinds of quality transformation efforts that Dr. Kaiser in Washington said, this will be, and everyone kind of rolled over, and, and it changed. And in reality, the VA's quality transformation even was a bottom-up development, where primary care was actually enacted two years before Dr. Kaiser came into town. Now, there was an important substrate there that allowed for the top-down to work from that point. But each one of these exemplars provides examples where there are people in the front lines that you might not expect to be champions, uh, that you need to acknowledge and recognize their value, as well as the importance of leadership buy-in. You'll hear, again, the same issue about partnerships within and across levels. Now, I don't know how many of you are used to working within your own office. You don't, I, many of you I'll see here at a meeting like this, and I won't even see back at my home shop. I haven't seen Brian in months, right? Um, and it's one of those things where we end up not coming out of our own silos, if you will. And so the, the exemplars really showed us the importance, the essential aspects of research clinical partnerships, not just for implementation, but also sometimes co-funding those implementation activities. Uh, our lack of control over implementation leaves us to, in a situation where we're outside of our comfort zone very often. I don't know how many of you got your PhDs, your MDs, assuming you're going to have to go figure out how to talk to legislators, or that you're going to have to figure out how to talk to a CEO who's really not interested in the evidence that you're providing. Um, this requires a lot of shared knowledge, trust, and specification of roles at each level, team building before, during, and after implementation, the continual identification of stakeholders in the network because these people change just like people in your own teams change and their interests change over time. We found a strong leadership support at each level was absolutely essential. And again, you, need to, you can't come in and do your initial launch meeting and then go away for three years and come back and say, this is what happened. This is a continual set of relationships. Uh, you have to use their leadership support to elucidate other key players. They are the ones that I think someone spoke about yesterday that are ensuring that people at these different levels are accountable. And they have roles in coalition building. And as we were just talking about uh, electronic health records, most of these practices did benefit from electronic medical records, but not all. And those that did indicated that if you don't have your favorite IT person in your back pocket, you're in a bit of trouble. 
We also talked about implementation facilitators and barriers. And I think that uh, uh, Arnie talked about the other day the absolutely critical importance of organizational supports, whether it's direct grants or special allocations for resources, or simply the protected time to do quality improvement and implementation. Some of that, those resources may be centralized. They had in the tobacco control program, local places needed a media campaign, but the state was really able to do that with their resources and spread it locally, or shared resources, for example, with EMR support, support where one organization may create a template and that's distributed throughout organizations. The barriers, though, in this kind of work are not insubstantial. They require interdisciplinary cooperation, and that may be met with resistance. Uh, there are turf issues, especially if there's competition for resources, and I mentioned before this problem with silos where we're used to speaking to ourselves and not to people with different disciplines and backgrounds. The perceived value of the, MLA, of the, the interventions is always balanced with competing demands among busy levels, bu busy members at each level. So we have, to offered, excuse me, we have to also understand the importance of the policy context, the fiscal climate, the performance incentives that are critical to understanding what's surrounding players at each implementation level. Now that gives me two examples in the red time that I have, no time I have left. Um, Harvard Vanguard had a situation where NCQA had just introduced a new HEDIS measure. Uh, two of the four major uh, health insurers in Massachusetts were f participating in that field test. They had pay for performance integration into the contracts in their state and a statewide monitoring program all at the time that they were trying to do their project. A beautiful, perfect storm. And the master settlement agreement with the tobacco industry ensured that there were actually resources that could go to state and local communities to enact that evidence. Uh, the determinants of spread just are very similar to those of implementation with the key here issue here of the explication of handoffs. You're not gonna be in charge of your intervention anymore. You have to find partners who are going to own it, want it, and make it theirs. And when they do, they're going to try and change it. And you're gonna to have to learn how to work through that process. So in conclusion, uh, we found, despite those challenges, the implementation and spread of multi-level interventions into routine practice and policy is feasible and effective, that attention's needed within and across those levels. There, we talked about some, the current mismatch between the reviews and the reality of doing this work. And I want to leave you with the notion, though, that sustainability in this work is indeed a myth. Uh, we hear this from our in industrial engineering colleagues. You always will have new evidence, new stakeholders, and a new context that will be continually changing. But we think the investment will pay important dividends. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. I realize that the uh, time constraints are difficult. We are, what we're trying to do is start a dialogue, open up the papers, begin to have people understand some of the issues. And I think what the reason that we wanted Becky involved here was her, her vast experience in implementation and to begin to, to see that some of the issues you deal with in implementation are things that we can think about in research. What levels, what are the influences, how do we move it, uh, how do we anticipate some of the issues ahead of time. 